In this video, we are going to get an overview of how to perform hydrologic modeling using HEC-HMS. It is assumed that you have some background of hydrology because we are not going to go into details of all the hydrologic processes and methods used in HEC-HMS. So let's get started. So HEC-HMS is developed by the US Army Corps of Engineers through their hydrologic engineering center. So this is where HEC comes from and HMS stands from hydrologic modeling system. So it's a public domain software, which means that you can get the installation or executable file free in the public domain, but you will not have access to the source code. It can be used in lumped or semi-distributed mode and it can also be used for both event and continuous simulation but mostly it is used for event based simulation and specifically for hydrologic design earlier versions of HMS did not involve any GIS pre-processing but any version 4.4 or later has GIS capabilities and we will briefly discuss those later this is how the HEC HMS interface looks so you can see it has sort of four compartments on the top left you see watershed explorer below that is component editor on the right we have desktop and below that is message lock you can think of desktop as a map interface so this is where you will see the sub basins and reach and sinks and all that and on the top left the watershed explorer will show you what is included in the model so if you have basin it will show the name of that basin if you click on that basin it will show you what is included in that basin model if you have time series you will see that time series file or folder here and when you run simulation this is where you can find what the simulation name is and so on and when you select something in the watershed explorer the parameter associated with any element or information associated with any file is shown in the component editor and when you run simulation when you do something in your HMS model all that information is displayed here in the message log so if you run a simulation and get an error this is where you will see so again this is just a quick overview of hec hms interface so let's move on to learn more about hec hms in order to perform a hec hms simulation we need to have these four files so when we say we create a hec hms model basically we are creating these four files so the first file is project file and it will have an extension of .hms so whenever we create an empty HMS model and save it a .hms file will be created and it will contain information about the project it will have that project name it will also have the model version and it will also have the data file name and time zone and it will also contain information about all the related files which are these three files so basin file meteorologic file and control specification file basin file will have an extension of dot basin and it will basically contains watersheds physical properties stream network connectivity and methods and parameters used to simulate the hydrological processes in the model meteorologic file will have a dot met extension and it will contain information about meteorology or weather input and finally control specification file will have an extension of dot control and it will contain information on the simulation start date end date and time interval so let's quickly look at the details of some of these files and we'll spend more time talking about the basin file because that is the important file that you need to run a hec hms simulation this is how a project file looks so you can see it is a text file so even though it has an extension of dot hms you can open that using notepad it has this basic description including the name version 
data file time zone and then there is this meteorologic file that has a name of met underscore one you have the basin file this is for cedar creek so this is cedar creek dot basin and then this is the control specification file which is control underscore one so project file is simply a text file next we have basin file so what you see on this slide is just a small portion of what the basin file includes so what you see here is information about a sub basin it has a name sub basin dash 6 this includes the information on its location its area and what is downstream of that basin then it will contain information about the methods that are used to simulate the hydrologic processes in that basin and then this information will be repeated for all the sub basins and then it will have similar information for all the reaches and junctions and so on when we create basin file it will be an empty file so we have to populate that basin file and there are three steps involved in populating that basin file so the first step is to delineate stream network and sub basin so remember basin file contains properties of our watershed and to extract those properties we have to delineate stream network and these sub basins we know how to do this using arcgis hydrology tools and also arc hydro and in older versions of hkhms we did not have any gis capabilities so we had to use for example geo hms to do all this but these days with newer version of hack hms we don't need any other external gis program to do that so we are going to use the internal gis capabilities in hack hms to perform this first step after that first step we move on to step two so in step two for each of these sub basins that you see here when for all these reaches we will select some methods to simulate the hydrology and then finally in step 3 we will assign parameters to all the methods that we have selected in step 2 now HMS is a computer software so even though our sub basins and river network look like this but the program doesn't really care about the exact shape of all these sub basins and streams all it cares is about connectivity so instead of using this gis layers hkhms will create its schematic network and this is what you see here on the right so what we have are the sub basins that are representing these polygons and then this dark blue line that you see here are the streams that are connecting all these sub basins and finally we have this sink which is our outlet so there are multiple elements in HMS that we can use to represent the hydrologic system in this module we are not going to use all of them we are mainly going to use sub basins that we saw in the previous slide and these sub basins are connected by reaches so we have reach and finally everything drains to the outlet and that outlet is represented by a sink in HMS. so if we include reservoirs and diversions and if there is a source that is adding water to our watershed we can add these other elements but in this module we are just going to create a simple HMS model so we will only use sub basin reach and sink so sub basin is a important element in HMS. this is where the rainfall gets transformed into runoff so the key input here is precipitation and after that precipitation falls on a sub basin the program will calculate excess rainfall so in order to calculate excess rainfall the program should know where all the water is getting lost so there are methods to incorporate those so the first one is canopy so this includes the water that gets intercepted by trees and other vegetation on the land 
then we have surface processes or methods so this represents any sort of depressions and storage that we have on the surface and finally we have loss methods so loss in this case represents the water infiltrating into the ground so these are the methods that we can use in sub basin to convert precipitation into excess rainfall or excess precipitation or direct runoff and from that direct runoff we will create the hydrograph and that is performed using a transform method so excess rainfall is transformed into direct runoff and once we have that direct runoff we can add base flow to get the total stream flow so these are the processes that are involved at the sub basin level after we get the hydrograph from the sub basin it will flow through those reaches to reach the outlet so essentially when the water is flowing through those reaches we perform routing and then we also have loss and gain methods so if the water is getting lost as it is flowing through channels or if it is gaining water then we can incorporate that this is a graphical view of all the processes that are taking place as the rainfall gets transformed into stream flow so we start with rainfall hydrograph which is the main input then we calculate loss and then after subtracting that loss we get excess rainfall that excess rainfall gets transformed into direct runoff hydrograph and then that direct runoff hydrograph is routed through reaches to get the routed hydrograph and finally we can add base flow to get the total stream flow hydrograph now these are all the methods that are available in Hake HMS and we are not going to use all of them we are not going to use canopy we are not going to use surface we are going to use loss and to perform that loss we are going to use the SCS curve number method to get excess rainfall and then we will transform our excess rainfall to direct runoff hydrograph using the SCS unit hydrograph transform method and again we are not going to include any base flow for reach these are the routing methods that are available to us in our case we will only use muskingum method and we are going to ignore loss and gain methods now as i mentioned earlier we had to use a gis interface to create a basin file but the latest version of hake hms has gis capabilities it is still evolving so it does not have all the capabilities specifically it does not have capabilities to extract some of the parameters so the two parameters that are critical for the scs curve number method are the curve number and then for the transform method we need to get the lag time or that lag time is dependent on time of concentration so here is a brief methodology on how to do this and when we actually create the model we will see how to perform these steps in detail using example data sets this is the equation that we are going to use for calculating the time of concentration which will then be used to calculate the lag time and we are going to see how to use this equation in Hake HMS by also using some GIS capabilities outside Hake HMS. After we have basin file, the next file that we have to create is meteorologic file. As I mentioned, meteorologic file will include information on weather input, and this is how a meteorologic file looks like. Now, this file does not necessarily contain all the rainfall values. As you can see here, that the rainfall information is stored in another file called gauge one so this is a time series file and we are going to see how to create that time series file when we create our hake hms model 
Similar to the subbasin methods, there are multiple options for including meteorologic information and you see three options here. One is for precipitation, the second one is for evapotranspiration and the third one is for snow melt. In this module, we are going to perform hydrologic simulation for a single event. So we do not have to worry about evapotranspiration and snow melt. So we will only use precipitation information. And again, for specifying precipitation, there are multiple ways. In our case, we are going to use specified hydrograph and we will specify that hydrograph by creating a gauge. After you create meteorologic file, the last file that we have to create is control specification file. As I mentioned, control specification file primarily includes the start date of simulation, the end date of simulation, including the time, start time and end time, and finally the time interval for which we want to run the simulation. After you specify this information, a control specification file gets created and then we are ready to run the simulation. So how to run the simulation, how to look at the results, we will discuss and look at those in more detail when we actually create our HEC HMS model. So the goal of this presentation was to just give you an overview of what is involved in creating a HEC HMS model we will look into more detail and specifics when we create our first HEC HMS model in the following units. So this is all for this unit. Thank you.